Here I've got a nice problem which would be equally well suited on a math contest as well as like on a homework or an exam question for like a junior or sophomore level in college number theory course. So our goal is to determine when 5 to the m plus 5 to the n can be written as the sum of two squares. So in other words, when it equals a squared plus b squared for integers a and b. And maybe to be a little bit more thorough, what I really mean by this is what are the rules governing the values of m and n that make this possible. And if you want some more information on this topic, I would look up number theory kind of in general, sums of squares, which is generally a chapter in every number theory book that you could look at, or more generally quadratic forms. So in both of my number theory playlists, like my first round playlist, as well as my updated number theory playlist, I go over sums of squares if you want to check those out. Okay, so we're going to start with the following proposition, which is really just a good fact to know for a lot of different settings like this. And that is if x and y are sums of two squares, I guess I should have two here. So if x and y, which are integers, I haven't written that, but we're assuming x and y are integers, and they're both sums of two squares, so they can be both expressed in this form, then so can their product. And there are a couple of different proofs of this. One kind of arrives at it with a wild guess, but I like doing a proof that involves the Gaussian integers, which is like a complex version of the integers. So let's take x to be equal to a squared plus b squared. Remember, that's our hypothesis, is that x is a sum of two squares. And then furthermore, we'll take y to be c squared plus d squared. That's our other hypothesis. And then we'll factor this over the Gaussian integers. So I'll say what that means in just a second. So this factors as a plus bi times a minus bi. And that's occurring in this object z adjoin i. So z adjoin i, or in other words, the Gaussian integers, that's everything of the form a plus bi, where a and b are integers. Okay, now we can similarly factor c squared plus d squared in this ring. That's as c plus di times c minus di. And from here, we'll multiply x and y and carefully combine these four objects. So maybe I'll write it like this. Let's notice that x times y is in fact equal to a plus bi times c plus di times a minus bi times c minus di. So I've commuted some things around there. Now let's multiply these two together. That'll give us a c minus b d plus i times a d plus b c. So that's what we get from that. And then we get, in fact, the complex conjugate of this for this last part. So that'll be AC minus BD minus I times AD plus BC. Great. But now if we multiply this with its complex conjugate, we get exactly what we want. So let's notice we get AC minus BD squared plus AD plus bc squared. And we've done what we wanted to do. We expressed x times y as a sum of two squares under the assumption that x and y could each be expressed as a sum of two squares. Okay, so now that we've got this proposition proven, we're ready to jump into our goal question. We just got done proving a really important proposition that will help us towards our goal of identifying which values of m and n make 5 to the m plus 5 to the n the sum of two squares. So we're going to assume that m is bigger than or equal to n, but you get a symmetric result if you assume the other one. So I'll let you guys do that. And actually, our first case will be the case when we have equality. So let's write that down. So case number one is m is equal to n. So there we have 5 to the m plus 5 to the n is the same thing as 2 times 5 to the m. 
Well, that's pretty clear because m is equal to n. But now let's write 2 as 1 squared plus 1 squared. And then we can write 5 as 1 squared plus 2 squared. And then that's to the m power. So we've taken our object and written it as the product of things that are each the sum of two squares. So that tells us that this is in fact equal to the sum of two squares for some values a and b. Now, it's hard to write down exactly what those are, but by our proposition, we know they must exist. So now let's move on to our second case which will be the case when m is strictly bigger than n. And in this case, we can do a little bit of factoring. So we can take 5 to the m plus 5 to the n and factor it as 5 to the n times 5 to the m minus n plus 1. I'll just write that this term right here is OK. And what I mean by OK is it can be expressed as the sum of two squares. Well, we expressed it kind of as the sum of two squares over here already. And we're just raising that to the nth power. So we know that that, by our proposition, can also be written as the sum of two squares. So that brings us to the following question, which will finish it all off. And that is, when can... 5 to the m minus n plus 1 be written as the sum of two squares. Well, I'm going to break this down into two cases as well. So my first subcase here, which I'll just put a 1 for, will be if m minus n is even. And I'm in fact just going to write this as m minus n equals 2 times r for some integer r. Actually, it's some natural number r given that m is bigger than or equal to n. But notice if we're in this setting, then this is already the sum of two squares. So let's notice that we have 5 to the m minus n plus 1 is in fact equal to 5 to the r squared plus 1 squared. So that means in this setting, we're also okay. So just to reiterate what we have, if m minus n is even, and that actually includes the case when m is equal to n as well. Then 5 to the m plus 5 to the n can be written as the sum of two squares. And that's because 5 to the n always can. And then this is already the sum of two squares. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at the last subcase when m minus n is odd. Where are we so far? Well, we started by assuming that m is bigger than or equal to n, although the case when n is bigger than or equal to m is totally symmetric. So far, we've proven that if m minus n is even, then 5 to the m plus 5 to the n is the sum of two squares. Notice that includes the case when m is equal to n because 0 is an even number. Furthermore, this also includes the case when we have the ordering in the other direction. And in fact, I don't think we're going to need this ordering anymore now that we've gotten this far. Now we want to do a final check of what happens if m minus n is odd. And we'll in fact show that it cannot be expressed as the sum of two squares in this case. And we'll do that by looking mod 8. So let's maybe notice the following fact that 5 to the 1 is congruent to 5 mod 8. So there's nothing going on there. But 5 squared is equal to 25 is congruent to 1 mod 8. So it follows that 5 to any odd number is congruent to 5 mod 8. And 5 to any even number is congruent to 1 mod 8. But now, if we know that m minus n is odd, that means exactly one of those is even and exactly one of those is odd. So let's write that down really quick. So since m minus n is odd, they have opposite parity. That's just a fancy way of saying that one is even and one is odd. 
So maybe without loss of generality, let's assume that M is the even one and N is the odd one. But now we can take our object here, five to the M plus five to the N and rewrite it as one plus five modulo eight by this reduction that we just talked about right here. But let's notice that that is congruent to six modulo eight. Then next up, we wanna look at all perfect squares mod eight. And we'll do that just by making a little chart. So let's say this is n and then this is n squared mod eight. And we actually don't have to go very far because this chart very, very quickly starts repeating. So once it starts repeating, I'll stop. So let's notice if n is zero mod eight, n squared is zero. If n is one, n squared is one. If n is two, it is four. And then if n is three, we're back to one. And that actually repeats over and over and over again. I'll let you guys fill in the rest of the ch chart if you need to, but the only possible perfect squares are one, four, and zero. But now let's notice that if we want to write six as the sum of two squares, then we're writing six as the sum of two numbers from this chart. But the sum of any two numbers from this chart is never equal to six. So zero plus one is one, zero plus four is four, four plus one is five, that's not equal to six. So needless to say, we cannot achieve six mod eight by taking the sum of two squares. So I won't write that down. It's a little bit wordy. I'll let you think about how to write that down really carefully, but that's the gist of how to finish this. So that leads us to an impossibility of writing five to the M plus five to the N as the sum of two squares when N minus N is odd. And that's a good place to stop.